Well, thank you, and uh, thank you for letting me be a part of your wonderful conference. I've seen so many great families already uh, just being here and then knowing the Culver Houses as well. Um, this is a very tight community, and it's something that uh, making our families, not only our children that have deletions, but also our entire family as healthy as possible is a passion that we've had for many years. So this is where this presentation came from. And a um, little bit about me, I came from a, a situation where my son also had uh, uh, developmental delays of a different sort. And what we found out was a lot of this uh, stemmed from some of the toxicities and some of the um, things that he was exposed to from birth. And even though the, the, your children that have this gene deletion also may have some of these other problems as far as um, de deficiencies or toxicities that also can be something that can be done. And we'll talk about that a little more as we go on, okay? Just to let everybody know, the information in this presentation is for educational purposes only, not to be taken as specific medical advice. Any medical decisions regarding you and your child's health issues should be discussed with your health care provi provider. Okay, the legal stuff is done. These are some of the medical conditions that are associated with the 1P36 deletion. And I think probably you guys could probably preach to me more about these types of medical conditions than I can to you. I just wanted to bring this up because, as you can see, multiple, med multiple systems are affected by this gene deletion. But not any one of them is for every child. And that's something that I wanted to get into a little bit more and, and to give you guys some information in regards to why. Why isn't every kid have it? Why doesn't every kid have every one of these possible conditions? And that's where I feel that the field of epigenetics where the field of basically the genetic condition that you, all of your families are affected by has a relationship with the environment in which they're raised in. And changing that environment can maybe lessen or maybe eliminate some of the medical conditions that your children are being affected by. And yourselves as well. This talk is for the entire family, not just for our children to have these deletions, okay? So, like I was saying, the gene deletion manifests itself in multiple systems. But there are factors that can be improved to maximize the health and potential of every child. Because we have more than just one child. Everybody in our own self. Because par as parents with children that are affected developmentally, you know, we always say that we have to live forever, right? So we got to stay healthy. And that's the best way that we can be the best for our children. Well, what type of burden do these, do these children, do all children end up with? Well, they end up with genetic predispositions, as you guys know very, very well. But there's also mother's burdens. Even prenatally, during the pregnancy, there's certain things that moms are exposed to or conditions they're dealing with that, they, that can affect the outcome of this child. Heavy metals, something that uh, people don't really think about too much, but there are metals that we drink, there's metals that we breathe, there's metals that come you know, in forms of other types of exposures that also can sit and not be disposed of in our bodies that then cause health, health problems. Environmental pollutants, excess sensory input, even just having certain lights in the room or having too much noise. As you guys know probably pretty well, as well as I do, if there's a big chaotic area or even a conference like this, it can be overstimulating for our children. And that's something that needs to be recognized and made sure that we can do something about. Stress, internal conflicts, dietary factors, something I deal with every day. I deal a lot in diet and changing the diet and getting the right nutrition for my patients. Microbial. It's also something in regards to the GI system. And then immune inflammatory burden. And that's some of the manifestations of these deficiencies, nutrition-wise, and infections and toxicities 
all of it coming together and can cause these kind of chronic inflammatory states that affects most of these chronic diseases that our, that our country is plagued with right now. People say, well, our babies are born chemical free, right? They're, they have this clean slate and then they get exposed. Well, they did a study in 2008 showing 10 minority children demonstrated to have up to 287 chemicals in their cord blood. So these babies weren't even born clean. So that shows you how much we are exposed to even before birth. So to say that these, these children have that you know, clean slate before when they're born is not even the case. So that's why when we start talking about cleaning up you know, the environment, cleaning up our diet, things like that, it starts even before the child's born. But for us that have children, which is all of us right now, it's important now. It's, there is no time when this isn't a, is, isn't a priority. So what does it do? What do these toxic burdens do? And this kind of gets more into the medical side of things, but I just want to give you a brief oversight, that overview of what this can do. I mean, there's things, impaired detoxification. What that means is that if you drink something or eat something that your body can't handle, your body's going to have less ability to get rid of those toxins as you build up toxicity in your body. So it's, it manifests in these methylation, sulfation. These are all kind of things that I deal with, but just to give you an a, a overview or, or an introduction to what, what specifically gets affected. Oxidative stress. People have heard of antioxidants, right? Oxidative stress is the reason you need antioxidants. And that's the stress going on inside the cell that doesn't allow it to work properly, doesn't allow neurons to transfer messages correctly. It does so many things to affect how we function. Nutrient deficiencies. I think most people don't realize how nutrient deficient we are as a nation. We're chronically vitamin D deficient. We're chronically vitamin E deficient. We are chronically omega-3 fatty acid deficient, all of which can lead to more inflammatory stress. Number one killer in the country is heart disease. Heart disease is a chronic inflammatory disease, which is why most cardiologists now are recommending omega-3 fatty acids and, and vitamin D for most of their patients. So gastrointestinal dysfunction is something I deal with very, very commonly from a standpoint of what's going on inside the gut. What people don't realize is that we have over 100 trillion bacteria in our gut. We have more bacterial DNA than our own DNA. And that's something that's being studied very heavily now because they're finding that more and more disease states People who have these diseases have a different type of gut flora than people who don't. So to say that that's not affecting our health is now becoming more and more common that that's, that's just the wrong type of thinking. And then chronic inflammation like we talked about. So how do we do? What do we do? We got all this stuff, Barry. It's going on. So we have things that we can do to change that. Clean up our diet, which is easier said than done. Clean up the home, clean up the environment. Okay? Great statements. Simple to think about. Very difficult in, in practice because it means we have to really change our entire thought process on what we eat, drink, and do. But if we really had true marketing of what we ate, this is what it would look like. Because if you take away the actual marketing of food that we eat and know what it's actually done, how it's processed and how it's brought to the table, it is. It's more like Franken food because what we used to eat from a, from a farm to a table has no longer become farm to a table. It's gone through multiple levels of processing which leads to better shelf life, which leads to better profit margins, which leads to less health. So our nutrition value of our food has drastically reduced. And that's something that is, do you understand that then people understand why, why we have such an obesity problem in our country? Is because we're eating more, but we're getting less. But it's making more money. You know, and all these different characters are a product of all these different chemical processes of food. 
So what chemicals should we avoid, Barry? This is a great start. And how you get into this, and people who are writing frantically, I'm going to have this whole presentation on their website. So you don't have to. <laughs> Hallelujah, right? Okay. I apologize I didn't have it ahead of time, but I will have it. They're going to have it on the website, so you will be able to access this entire, entire presentation, okay? And I'm going to give you resources of places to start le learning more and educating yourself more, okay? So artificial sweeteners, there's all sorts of them. We're going to go over them each in, in general. Artificial colorings, MSG, and that's something I'm going to talk a little bit about because MSG is not just MSG. You aren't going to find it on a label and it's going to just be right out there and say, hey, we have MSG. There's over 37, almost 40 different names that are allowed on a product label that basically are MSG. So we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. And then preservatives, because preservatives have zero nutritional value, but they extend the, pr the shelf life of that product. So your body doesn't do anything but have to detox them out. There's nothing that it does for you. So I put this up, and it's a little bit blurry, but just by looking at the different ingredients, can anybody even guess what product this is? Go ahead. One guess. That's excellent. Give her a hand. That was excellent. Man, I need to do better as far as my tricking. But... There's, this is an educated room. I love it. But just look at this. Remember we talked about the different things to avoid? These are all those things. Bad, bad, bad. Avoid, avoid, avoid. You've got multiple ingredients on this list, right? These are things that have no nutritional value. Look at the label. Good source of fiber. Whole grain. Vitamins. Every bit of that nutrition is canceled by the chemical it used to preserve it. So Fruit Loops is equal zero. It's a filler. There's no nutritional value because anything that could have possibly been healthy in there gets canceled by the things that it's used to be preserved in. And that's just one example. So just to give you an idea, people love to have you know their drinks and they're looking at different you know things to have in their drinks. Well, artificial sweeteners is something that's taken over for sugar because sugar is bad. So people would have sweeteners in their drinks, especially coffee drinkers. Don't get the sugar packet. Get equal. Well, did you know that equal turns into formaldehyde in the body? And I think everybody pretty much knows what formaldehyde is used for. It's preserving dead people. So for people who eat a lot of equal, don't worry about it. I'm sure your, your uh, you know, deceased preservation product will probably don't need to be as much. So maybe you'll save some cash when the corner comes in, okay? Saccharin. Saccharin has linked to cancer, the uterus, ovary, skin, blood vessels, other organs. That's sweet and low. Sweet and low has been used for decades. High fructose corn syrup. At least high fructose corn syrup is starting to be brought up for what it is. And that's a highly processed form of cornstarch because corn is king in this country. And what they've been using for, they use toxic heavy metals such as mercury in the process of processing this and making high fructose corn syrup. So everything from ketchup to salad dressing, the number one product that has high fructose corn syrup in the highest amount is yogurt. Everybody thinks, eat yogurt, good bacteria, you know, good amounts of good stuff, right? Have Jamie Lee Curtis telling you, make sure you hit, stay regular. Except for the fact that high fructose corn syrup cancels any benefits that you got from the good bacteria. And then sucralose. Sucralose is the new one. You know, people were getting wise to saccharin. Saccharin, ooh, that's bad. You know, even aspartame, they're like, oh, aspartame. So let's get a new one. Splenda. Splenda was the new sugar. It was excellent. All right, it was not the bad stuff. It's just the same thing. Unfortunately, it's an artificial sweetener. And even though it hasn't shown up to have links to cancer yet, it's just because the studies haven't been done yet. 
So don't think that this, because it hasn't been shown yet, that it hasn't happened. Go ahead. Stevia is a natural product. Stevia is, the, the question is, is what about stevia? Stevia is a new um, leaf-based sweetener. That is a natural sweetener. It's not artificially processed and made. However, stevia is not always stevia, and that's where you have to get into the kind of the devils in the details. Depends on the company, depends on how it's made. So the stevia leaf that makes the sweetener is usually just fine. But remember, stevia is grown. Well, how is it grown? Is it grown with a bunch of pesticides? Is it grown organically? Is it processed maybe minimally so it gets the most pure product? Or is it heavily so you get more profit margin? These are the questions you have to keep asking. And it takes deeper investigation when it comes to these types of products, unfortunately. And the only people that are looking are us, consumers. Here's the illusion of health. These were the products that became, you know, don't, don't drink pop. Pop's bad. Drink vitamin water. Number two ingredient in vitamin water, crystallized fructose. That's not high fructose corn syrup, right? Except for it's crystallized fructose, which is high fructose, which comes from corn syrup. So I guess it's not, but it is. So bottom line, it is. It's no different than having a Coke without carbonation and throwing a couple B vitamins, which of course, again, are, are canceled out because of all of this stuff that is used to process it. So no, I'm not a big fan. And then I put a picture of the grocery store because this is pretty much high fructose corn syrup and chemicals all through the middle of the grocery store. So the only place you really should go in a grocery store is on the outside. Fruits and vegetables, good meats, you know, and try to get as much organic as possible. We'll get into that. What about MSG? What does MSG do? MSG, it raises the blood level of glutamates, not naturally, because there's some foods that naturally have MSG in it, but they actually have natural glutamates. Our body actually needs a lot of glutamate. It's what stimulates our body to, to basically fire in the neurons. Problem is, monosodium glutamate does it at such a high rate, it's so much, it blows through the blood-brain barrier and it turns off our hunger turn-off switch. Have you ever heard of Lay's, can't eat just one? That's what monosodium glutamate was designed for. It's a marketing tool, flavor enhancer. That's what it's marketed as. So just keep remembering, just keep bringing, you know, absorb this, and I just wanted to say there's, there's other products now. Like we said there was tons of names for MSG. And at the end, I'll show you, but there is an actual website called msgtruth.org. A second one is msgmyth.org. And they list all of the different names of monosodium glutamate, like yeast extract. You ever heard of that? That's another name. Hydrolyzed, um, hydrolyzed, uh, hydrolyzed protein is another one. Okay. What I wanted to show you, and I don't want to pick on your lunches, but anyone love the barbecue chips? Barbecue chips. They don't have. It doesn't label MSG, by the way. It does not label it. But one of the products is Torula yeast. Torula yeast is not MSG. Torula yeast is the new MSG. Torula yeast basically gives as much glutamates in the body as MSG. It just isn't made the same way. So buyer beware. You got to read these labels. And hopefully what, I, what I'm giving you the information on is how to read labels, what to look for, and then how to find alternatives. These are some of those hidden names we were talking about. <coughs> Quite a few. And this isn't even the full list. Recognize any? You said all of this is going to be on your website. No, this is actually going to be on the 1P36 website. Yep. Yep. 
So don't worry, this is all stuff that you use. But this all is going to be a, from different, um, this all comes from like that MSG truth. So you can find it there as well. And all sorts of even more information. Artificial colors, red, blue, yellow, orange, they're all derived from crude oil. Now that sounds pleasing. The way that we got our kids off of them is we used to tell them, okay, you can have that, that Skittle, but that Skittle, you're gonna have to take a teaspoon of this motor oil because it has the same chemicals in it. So they used to get, you know, fighting at first and now they're not so much fighting about it. But the thing about it though is that there is actual studies directly linking food dyes with hyperactivity in children. And that is a real thing and that's a real big deal because Hyperactivity is number one diagnosed condition in our children this in, in our country. And with our children that have deletions, deletion is one medical condition. It affects many systems, but a lot of, these a lot of our children also can have hyperactivity, also can have gut disorders, also can have seizure disorders, also can have other things. So we can't just focus on that one medical condition. We need to be thinking about all these other things because all of our children need to be as healthy as possible so that they can reach their maximum potential, regardless of what that potential is. Because even though maybe they, got, they have these, these challenges that they have to deal with, but if they're not healthy, that just limits them even more. So we need to think differently from a standpoint of making them as healthy as possible. Preservatives. I won't go through all of them one by one, but you can just see that preservatives do nothing but cause issues in our body. Everything, and even caffeine, which I was a little sad about, but you know, it also has preservative properties to it. It's also a stimulant, it's also a diuretic. So it's all things that, so all of these things. One of the ones that people were really worried, concerned about was caramel color. Caramel color is in Coke, it's in Pepsi, and what it does is it literally causes certain genetic defects and it's linked to cancer. So it's a big deal. Other foods, you know, keep going. Formula. What's the first ingredient in formula? Top five ingredient, corn syrup solids. And that's in Similac sensitive. So we're talking about, you know, even a, a broken down form that's supposed to be good for our kids. First ingredient is so corn syrup solids. Second is sugar. So we just have to keep, you, you, you cannot believe the hype. You have to educate yourself because our kids deserve it and they need it. Especially if they have other challenges. Their health depends on it. Because they can't always tell us what's wrong. And I see that a ton in my office. Pesticides, pesticides are a big problem. This is where the organic movement becomes a big deal because organophosphates, adverse effect in the neurobehavioral development of fetuses and children, even at level, low levels of exposure, they're finding certain petro or certain pesticides in soil that hadn't been treated with that pesticide in almost 20 years, DDT banned at this point, still being found in different fields, in soil samples. That's how toxic and how long these last and all sorts of problems. And these are other, so they banned DDT, but they allowed all of these other ones. So there's still plenty of other pesticides in, our, in use in industrial farming today. PCB is another one that's also used for, for pesticide, herbicides, so that they have a higher product yield. Again, this is all about good, good business practices, not so good health practices. Roundup, number one pesticide used in the world. Most widely used herbicide pesticide in the world. Significantly disrupts mitochondrial function. I find that that's one of the biggest problems I see with not only the children that I see, but also children that have genetic mutations, whether it be 1P36, trisomy 21, which is Down syndrome, they have a trouble producing energy. And if you have something that's in their system that is further disrupting their energy production, 
Now it's a double hit on them. Double hit on all of us. Because what is one of the biggest problems we have? We have things like chronic inflammatory states. We have fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. We all have adrenal stress. We all have adrenal fatigue because we have special needs children. These are things that you have to have your batteries working at full strength. This disrupts that every time. Small amounts, so you don't notice it at first, but built up over time, it's going to affect your health. Genetically modified organisms. Does anybody, everybody know what genetically modified organisms or GMOs are? Good, I'm glad, I'm glad then, because this is gonna be helpful. What genetically modified organisms or GMOs, everybody's kind of heard of GMOs though, right? You know, there's a big push on that right now to get them labeled. GMOs are an organism, whether it be bacteria, yeast, insects, big thing is plants, fish, and mammals whose genetic material has been altered using genetic engineering techniques. Basically, in a lab, they've taken the DNA of this specific plant, you know, bacteria or, or animal and changed it. So it's not exactly the same thing it was when God made it. So now it's made it different. Well, what they found is that it's causing some major problems in the health of human beings and animals. Because if animals eat the GMO plants and crops, they now have genetic mutations that they didn't have before. To the point where the American Academy of Environmental Medicine, which I'm a big part of, came out with not only, came out with a position paper. So this is kind of like a, a bold statement that they're stating as an organization, taking a stand saying that this GM food and animal studies has shown infertility, immune problems, accelerated aging, insulin, major changes to organs in the gastrointestinal system. These are major deals. And that's just from these genetically modified organisms. We aren't even talking about anything else. They felt so strongly about it, they actually participated in a campaign to label GMOs so that people would not have to buy them without knowing that they're in there. There was a big proposition in, in California a year ago called Prop 37. Gained a lot of press because there was millions and millions of dollars poured into telling California voters to not vote yes. They wanted them to vote no so they wouldn't have to label their GMO products and they called it a job killer. Your price of your food would go way up because they wouldn't be able to use GMO. Well, the biggest companies that, that used that or that were, were funding that were the big bio agricultural companies. Monsanto, Monsanto, DuPont, Kraft. And if you want, there's an actual, you can go on there, all you have to do is type that in. And there's all sorts of websites now that are, that are basically putting these companies that, that put big money into that campaign so they know that these are companies to try and stay away from. And again, food products were honestly labeled. We would get a little bit more of what we would actually get from them. The good news is, is that so many organizations are now recognizing this and they're doing something about it. One of the best organizations for labeling what pesticides are in foods and which ones have more pesticides and which don't is Environmental Working Group. Up at our table, they've actually, they used to have a little flyer like that, but now they've got it down to a business card, something you can take with you to the grocery store. So when you say, which one should we buy organic? Barry, I don't have a million dollars. We don't have the money tree in the backyard. I get it but there's certain fruits and vegetables that you should buy organic every time. Number one for the last 10 years has been apples. Apples is one of the most heavily pesticide-ridden um, foods that we have. And it's the thin skin of the apple absorbs a lot of that pesticide so it stays in the food. One of the reasons they're able to have the Clean 15 is because a lot of those are either underground or they have thick skin. So when you take off the skin, the pesticide doesn't go with it. So these are up front. So there's, there's a limited supply, but it's a good amount. 
So please grab one at the end. Eat like your ancestors, you know. We always joke that, you know, 100 years, organic food used to be called food. <laughs> Eat real food. Avoid processed food. Avoid the middle of the grocery store as much as possible. If it's on a shelf, it's preserved. No two ways about it. Get back in the kitchen. Our convenient living, and I get the stress and and the, uh, you know, having to run a, raise a family, and we have five kids. And we understand that, that, that life is hectic. But our kids' health depends on us doing these things. So it's become a priority in our household. And that's what I preach to a lot of my family, to so every family of mine, that you got to get back in the kitchen because that's the only way you're going to know what's in your food. So buy organic, avoid GMO foods. There's a websites here that talk about it. Eat locally grown organic produce as much as you can from green markets. And seek out local farms and co-ops. Almost every city now is having these food co-ops or community supported agriculture called CSAs. And all of those things can actually help to bring down the cost of real food. Then choose natural pasture raised, organic chicken, farm fresh or cage free eggs. No nitrates in hot dogs, okay? That's a big thing. And, and nitrates, again, they, they reduce our body's ability to detox it out, okay? Um, soy is another thing that GMO, 95% of soy in our country is genetically modified. And with that genetic modification, it mimics estrogen. Estrogen in girls and boys in an overdose amount is not good. A lot of breast cancer is estrogen driven. A lot of femininity, so in other words, there's other issues, especially with boys, that can cause problems when you have too much estrogen. So fermented foods is something that people talk about a lot. I think it's wonderful, and that's just a, that's a whole other topic and subject that we could go into for hours. But it's basically partially broken down food that has good probiotics in it. Avoid MSG, which is no big surprise there. Avoid nitrates, and then avoid synthetic colorings, flavorings, and preservatives. These are all things to do to help again. And there's every one of these has got good websites that will give you more information on how to do it. Okay, what about our home? Now that we're thoroughly sure that we can never eat again, how well can we go back to our house? Right? Well, I think everybody's heard of bisphenol A, or if you haven't, BPA. BPA is something that's being you know, slowly phased out, and I'm happy that's being slowly phased out. Unfortunately, BPA is now being replaced with BPS. BPS is just another form of BPA, but they can now label, say, we're BPA free. BPA, again, it causes all sorts of issues as far as breast, or as far as cancer, um, brain and hormone development. Phthalates is also another problem, and you'll be able to see more and more products are phthalate. They'll actually label them as phthalate free. Phthalate free. That's an easy one to say. Okay. But again, this gets into the stuff that's you know pretty technical as far as the different chemicals and the processes. Just know that a lot of different things like vinyl shower curtains. Have you ever smelled anything you open up from a box? Have you ever smelled like the vinyl? shower curtain when you first get it out, and you have to, you have to put it outside because it smells so bad. That's the chemicals. That's phthalates. That's BPA. BPA. Have you guys ever had a, ever held a receipt? Almost every receipt that uses a heat printer turns black. That's BPA. That's the reason they can make those receipts like that. Makes you not want to grab anything anymore. What's an alternative as far as cleaners? We were just talking about this before the talk. This is stuff that everybody really could and should have in their home. And if you actually can go online, you can find that this basically can replace all the cleaners in your house. And there's, there's ways of making all the different things you need basically with these ingredients. Now, is that easy? No, it's not. So not everybody can, can, can or wants to do you know, making all of it at home. However, there are alternatives. 
And all of these companies, and we have some samples up front. In fact, I think most of them are gone. <laughs> but the, uh, they, we had some samples up front of these good products, great companies, responsible companies that use good products and good practices. So those are alternatives that you can use that don't have those chemicals or those toxins in them. What about fluoride? Fluoride's good for us, right? Brush your teeth, make sure we have good, strong, healthy teeth. What doesn't told to you, though, is that if you actually ingest it, it's actually highly toxic for your body. And to say to a child that they're brushing their teeth that they're not going to swallow any, <laughs> it's pretty naive. And uh, so fluoride is something that is actually, it's a polluting byproduct of industrial chemicals and industrial um, aluminum making, steel and fertilizer processing. So what they did is they had all this fluoride and they needed a reason, a way to get rid of it. And they said, well, fluoride's good for the teeth. Why don't we just throw it in the water? And now you're finding more and more cities are actually banning fluoride from their waters because these types of studies are coming out. Flame retardants. People think of flame retardants as the spray we keep, you know, our, our fire extinguisher, right? Well, also people think of flame retardants as in our kids' clothes, right? Flame retardant PJs, flame retardant sheets. What makes them flame retardant? There's different amounts of these chemicals. Nine tons of these chemicals have um, cancer-causing properties that, that are used to make these, these clothes that our kids wear to bed and breathe for eight to 10 hours at a time. And they're just sucking these chemicals in in the name of flame retardant. But it's also made with toxic metal called antimony. Antimony is definitely causes headaches, dizziness, and depression. Even larger amounts can cause violent, frequent vomiting, can lead to death in a few days. That's a higher amount that's in these clothes, but we, that's also assuming that our kids get rid of this antimony when they breathe it in. That's not happening either. VOCs. VOCs is something that um, people are starting to learn more about. VOCs are in, in paints, mostly. Paint thinners, cleaning supplies. What they are is basically something that helps to keep the, the chemical properties of the paint. So again, it's a marketing tool. There's alternatives because VOCs are linked to cancer, damage to the liver, ki kidney, central nervous system. You're seeing a theme here, right? What are the, one of the major problems in our country is health-wise. Heart disease and cancer. So fragrances. A lot of people like to wear nice smelling perfumes. Problem is, is that there's tons of chemicals in these called galaxoline and tonalide. Those again, they affect our hormones. Report is Another one that proliferates estrogen response of human breast cancer cells. And also contain phthalates. There are alternatives. One of the things that is that people haven't realized is that there's milk-based paints. They're not as widely known, but they are out there. And chemically safe historic paints since 1974. Been around for 30 years. There's also um, different body po baby powders, roll-on perfumes that don't use any of those chemicals. So these are companies that I would implore you to start to look into and support and buy and, and make those choices with your wallet so that these companies become the standard companies. Because right now they're struggling just to make it by and keep that philosophy of what we want. What about toxic chemicals? We talked. We hit our toxic metals. We talked. About, we touched on it before. Lead is a big one. Lead we know. Lead literally will make will kill brain cells and make the brain retard in, in development. So now they're finding it used to be the blood level of lead that they would consider unsafe was 25 just 20 years ago. Now they've gotten it all the way down to five. Because think about the number of people that have had blood lead levels of 15 to 10 for years and never had anything done to it. Now they're showing it as low as levels of five. I don't die to get nervous if it isn't zero. 
because I know that children and the kids and the families that I deal with don't get rid of these chemicals or don't get rid of these, model, these metals very well, so it's building up and building up and building up. Mercury, extremely toxic, one of the most toxic things that we have in our world from a neurologic standpoint. They did a, they did a study showing what actual mercury does to a neuro, nerve cell and a nerve cell has what they call dendrites. And dendrites are what connect cells to different neuro, neuro cells to each other. And they put mercury into the petri dish on the other side. And just about putting it in the other side, the fumes from the mercury cell took the dendrites and went like this. It literally just killed it right on, right on just being even in the vicinity of the neuro, nerve cell. And yet we eat it, we drink it, and we get it injected in us. So it's something that shouldn't be anywhere near any of us. Things that are also being produced with mercury that people don't really realize is everyone having those compact fluorescent bulbs that are eco-friendly? The circular ones, the compact fluorescent bulbs? Yeah, and even the ones, all of these, they have actual, the, the fluorescent bulbs are, there's mercury in the actual bulb. So if you have any of those and one of them breaks, consider it biohazard. Because if you go and just sweep it up, you're kicking up a bunch of mercury fumes. That's then getting breathed in and that's killing cells. I've had kids, I've had one child that I know that I treated who had autism. His kid had gotten so well, he was almost off the spectrum. Was in his classroom in fifth grade they had three lights, you know, the three lights in the, in the actual ballast that they have in there for fluorescent bulbs. All three came off the ballast and exploded next to him. He regressed significantly. That's how much he was sensitive and that's how much it caused damage to his neurologic system that had just been repaired. Cadmium, people don't think about cadmium as much, but cadmium is in secondhand smoke. That's the number one thing it's shown from. And cadmium is nephrotoxic, which means it harms your kidneys, and it's a carcinogen. But also it's shown to be in nickel cadmium batteries, um, contaminated food, water from industrial pollution. So a lot of people who live by industrial plants, mercury, cadmium are two of the most uh, heavy chemicals that come out of those industrial processing plants. Arsenic is also highly toxic. Number one place you find arsenic well, not just drinking water, but playground mulch. And that was pretty interesting because so many of our children play in playgrounds all the time. But the mulch is used from recycled telephone poles, which are, do you see that black stuff, that tar that's on there? Has a ton of arsenic in it. Well, another new one um, that's also being shown is because our drinking water has so much arsenic in it, rice is grown in water. Even organic rice now is showing to have uh, high levels of arsenic in it. So it's, it's getting even into our organic products. I thought this was interesting too, because if you've ever seen a picture of them spraying chemicals onto, the, onto food or onto the, the uh, lawns, they have to wear masks. So it's like, do you always eat that too? This is what I was talking about with the industrial plants. Releases hundreds of tons of toxic carbon-based pollutants yearly. You can actually go on to this website called scorecard.org and type in your uh, zip code and it'll actually give you the different plants that are near your home and how much pollution they create. So you can get an idea of what that, what that exposure could be. Jet fuel. People talk about chemtrails as being you know, kind of like, oh, it's you know, conspiracy theory. I think of chemtrails as great. Now that's going to start trickling down and it's going to hit our fields. They found jet fuel on farms of uh, soil samples as far as two, what was it, two hundreds of miles from the nearest airport. So it's coming from somewhere. And it's not just airplane fuel, it's jet fuel. Water. There's so much pollution in the water in New York. The Potomac River has fish that have both male and female sex hormone or sex organs. 
because there's so much contraceptives in the water in the, in the Potomac River. We have tons of pharmaceuticals in our, in, in our processed, recycled water supply. Well water, not as much, but well water is more susceptible to methane from fracking. And if you've been in South Texas, fracking's king. In fact, there's many states. I'm from North Dakota. North Dakota has a huge fracking production right now, and it's killing their farm fields. They're some of the most, most fertile farm fields in our country, and they are being just decimated because by the amount of methane that they have to use to fracture the shale, that seeps back up into the soil to the point where the water that these people are drinking lights on fire. This isn't a stunt. This is Wyoming, Pennsylvania. This is an actual documentary showing that this is going on to the extent that people in their drinking water have enough methane that it actually can light it on fire. And there's actually a second now, there's Gasland too. Fracking can basically kills the water that you're drinking and it's gonna make our fields turn into just basically, it's like having toxic chemicals in it at all times because it just seeps up from the, from the ground. It's not even something we can stop on, on from a standpoint of just telling them not to do it. It's coming up from the ground now. All right, so how do we clean that up, right? Recycle, compost, buy local, eat local, um, reused, buy used. We, we're big on, on buying used clothes, buying used furniture, buying used because of the fact, not so much that I'm cheap, but just that's kind of a side benefit for a dad like me, but it's more from a standpoint of, I don't have to worry so much about off-gassing my new furniture, off-gassing my, my you know, flame retardant clothes, because by the time that, that, uh, they, that we get them, they've been washed many times where most of that's already come off. Or if I can, I try to buy organic material. So I save what I can and use it for other things. Nature-based nature chemicals, food, clothing, and household items. So how do we survive? I mean, Barry, you're doom and gloom, man. There's nothing. What do we do? You're going to go home and just not go anywhere. I'm not going to breathe. I'm not going to eat. It's been really uplifting after lunch, I know. This has been wonderful. Yes, luckily, and uh, thank you, Sherry, for putting it after lunch, because before lunch, I don't know if anybody would have been real happy with me. So we eliminate what harms and add what heals. Do like we just talked about, clean up the environment, the diet, and then improve our body's ability to eliminate these toxins. That's an important step because there's certain things that help to improve our body's ability to get rid of it, especially with our kids with a deletion. They're already behind the eight ball. We need to make sure they're getting the right nutrients so that they can then process this stuff out better. We have to support our body's ability. Eliminating toxins relieves oxidative stress and inflammation. These are just some of the different nutrients that our bodies need extra amounts of, not because it's the FDA recommended amount. We know that that's just to basically maintain our nutritional from a standpoint of surviving. Well, we know from our toxic world that there's no way that that's enough. So most of these, we need to either eat food that has a higher amount in them, but we have to find food that has a higher amount in them, or we have to supplement it. And that doesn't mean we always have to take a bunch of pills, but until we get ourselves to the point where we are absorbing those nutrients well enough, then yes, we have to. And how we do is we do it with things like support your methylation, sulfation. This all gets into stuff that Again, it gets more medically based, but this is stuff that I actually can find where these def deficiencies are. And then I can support them individually based on the patient because none of our kids are the same. And I know that as well as anybody. Even though they may have the same deletion, no two of these kids are the same. They're all individual. So we need to find out what individually they all need. And that's something that takes work. 
Did anybody know that 70% of our immune system isn't in our lymph nodes, it's not in our brain, it's in our gut? And the reason that's the case is that think about where you need your immune system the most. And I hate to say it, but it's an open hole from here to here. We got to have something to be our first line of defense. And that's where most of our exposures come from. So that's where it lies. It lies in our gut. Because we've got 100 trillion bacteria. Not all of them are friendly. And that's how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to have balance. But we got to have our own regulatory defense system so that it keeps in balance. But that good balance between good and bad bacteria will allow proper digestion and decrease bloating. So if you have problems with bloating, constipation, you know, malabsorption, in other words, you see whatever goes in here, like corn or food or anything, vegetables, and you see it come out, you're not digesting very well. And that's a problem because you're not getting any of the nutrition that you thought from the food that you're eating. Here are some resources. These are very important because this is where a lot of the information that I get comes from. And these are watchdog groups. Healthychild.org gave us all of, this, all of these products. So they're the ones that really promote healthy eating, healthy cleaning. They're an excellent organization in regards to promoting a healthy lifestyle. And all the rest of these are just different parts of what we, what we preach all the time. If you guys like documentaries, I like learning more from documentaries just because it kind of puts it in a little bit easier form to learn and it's very um, kind of family friendly. These are some really good ones to start learning more about, you know, pesticides, chemicals, GMO, organic, um, you know, the environment and how, what's happening to, to the, our environment. Thank you. <laughs>